You know what? Sometimes when we have these crazy ideas that are tossed out there into the media, it ignites some very interesting discussion. And that's what I wanted to focus on here in this video, because this tweet by Ken Campbell, who used to work for the Hockey News, this was published earlier last week. And it had 115 replies, 70,000 views, a whole bunch of retweets and quote tweets, and in comparison, very few likes. Not too many people went out there and agreed with this, but it was an idea nonetheless that I was very intrigued by, which is why I bookmarked it for later use. We're now making a video about this because, hey, why not? This is more relevant than ever, isn't it? Ken Campbell on June 2nd, so when was June 2nd? That was after Game 6 of the Florida and New York series. This is what Ken Campbell went out there and said, This is a serious question, not meant to prompt a bunch of toxic responses. In fact, I asked it to my beer league buddies a couple of months back. If you had an absolute must-win game, which player would you rather have in your lineup? Austin Matthews or Sam Bennett? This is the Ken Campbell edition of the The Martians Got the Death Beam Pointed at Earth, One Shot to Save Humanity. I want Iguadala to take that shot. This is that version of that. But it's a little bit different because Ken Campbell is asking, hey, game seven, must win game. You have one spot left in the lineup. Do you put Austin Matthews or do you put Sam Bennett? And the reason this was interesting to me, especially as of right now, is because if you take a look at what Sam Bennett has been doing in this year's Stanley Cup playoffs and ensuing Stanley Cup final, he has been a menace. A menace to remember. 27 years old, 6'1", 194. There's nothing special about the profile of Sam Bennett. He's a normal-sized dude. But this guy plays with a grit, a determination, a tenacity that is so difficult to go out there and replicate. It's difficult to match, too. The guy had 100 penalty minutes this year, 41 points, 69 games played. Do the math on that. 41 divvy, 69 multiplied out by 82. That's on pace for about a 49-point year. Not bad in the slightest, but in the playoffs last year when the Panthers went to the finals, Bennett had 15 points in 20 games played. This year, he's got 12 points in 14 games played, including what is a five-game point streak wherein he's got six points in that process. Take out this game three loss against the Rangers, and Sam Bennett has, what is that, seven points in his last eight games? Or, no, I'm an idiot. Eight points in his last eight games, excuse me. He's been fantastic in this playoff run for the Florida Panthers, even with a few pointless games against the Boston Bruins here and there. He has still been fine. Either way, though, when it comes to Sam Bennett, this has been one of the most impactful players on the ice who doesn't happen to be a quote-unquote big name. I mean, Bennett is only making $4.425 million a year till the end of next season. I get it, you know, everybody talks about the Florida state tax impacting these dollar amounts and making them lower, but Sam Bennett at 4.4 mil, who gets maybe 40 to 50 points a year, and who was able to provide that huge grit, this is a player that is causing so so many problems for opposing teams. He causes a ruckus everywhere he goes. He knocks people down, sometimes legally, other times illegally, and he makes his opponent's lives a living hell. Meanwhile, Austin Matthews, he does that too, but just on the score sheet. But the only thing is, he only does that on the score sheet when he's actually producing points to go up on the score sheet. Doesn't happen often, unfortunately. Austin Matthews is making $13.25 million a year till the end of 2028, and this season, of course, he had 107 points in the regular season, fantastic, 69 goals, he had 106 points two years ago, 60 goals, this year he had 4 points in 5 playoff games, which sounds great on paper, until you realize that he had 3 of those points in one game. 
There were three separate games in the playoff series against the Bruins where Austin Matthews scored zero points. And last year, you can say, it was kind of even worse. Even though he was a point-per-game guy, the majority of that production came against the Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round. Sam Bennett and the Florida Panthers shut down a lot of these Toronto Maple Leafs superstars in the second round last year. It was only really William Nylander who was able to pop off. And so, with this idea in mind, knowing that Sam Bennett is this crazy good, agitative force who can produce points and who does so at a cap hit at 4.45, 4.425, excuse me, million dollars a year, and you take a look at what Austin Matthews has done, sure, he'll have a game in a playoff series where he pops off, but for the rest of the time, sure, he might look a little bit dangerous, sure, he might be a shooting threat, but... Even if you go back to last year, I mean, Austin Matthews had two points in the opening two games against Florida and zero points to end off that series as the Leafs got eliminated. Austin Matthews has not shown up in these clutch moments in the same way that his teammate William Nylander has, nor in the same way that Sam Bennett has. And so I go back to that question at the very beginning of the video. This is a serious question. If you had an absolute must-win game, who would you rather have in your lineup, Austin Matthews or Sam Bennett? Let's go out there and read some of the replies. After going through all the stuff that we had talked about, dissecting these players and dissecting the idea, Michael Del Volano goes out there and says, Austin Matthews, Matthews, hands down. I'm surprised you're even playing a beer league, Ken. But the answer is Sam Bennett, and it shouldn't even be close. There also are some other people saying, hey, this is not a serious question. It's hard to believe that you have friends, Ken. <laughs> ay, 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 that's a lot, eh? That's a lot. A lot of roses, depends on the makeup of my team. Leafs got a lot of guys that can score. The Panthers got a lot of guys that can grind you down. It's kind of a tough question for me, but if it was my Flames, I'd go Matthews. If it was for the Oilers, I'd say Bennett. Sam Bennett, there's an answer here. Bennett or Kachuk, he's a better comparison. No, that's the point, Hockey Rules 1. You want to take different styles and compare and contrast them and ask which rathers. Sam Bennett, if I wanted a player of zero integrity who wins by concussing opposing key players. Austin Matthews, if I wanted to win on talent alone. And then you had Jeff Fayette go out there and say, lol. The thing is, if you had to ask me about this, my logical reasoning brain says, yeah, no, Austin Matthews is the better player, so I'd say Austin Matthews. Sam Bennett, unfortunately, is never gonna score 69 goals in a season like Austin Matthews has already done. But under the circumstances, underneath the umbrella of what this situation proposes, I don't know, it's hard to agree with Matthews. It's hard to disagree with the idea of Sam Bennett being more important, more valuable, more helpful for you winning an absolute must-win game. If it's Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals, sure, you want Austin Matthews to go out there and score a hat trick. But do you believe that he's going to do that? I mean, the sample that we have seen of Matthews over the years indicates that it might actually be unwise to make that bet. But Sam Bennett could go out there and grind down your opponents, torture them mentally, and maybe get an assist or two on top of that. I don't know, man, if it's circumstantially one game decides it all. The Martians have the death beam pointed at Earth. I want Iguada. Okay, no, we're not going to say that. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this weird and wacky, crazy idea that Ken Campbell went out there and talked about. Who would you rather have in your lineup? Austin Matthews or Sam Bennett? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you agree, disagree with my assessment and with Ken's implication over here? Ken doesn't go out there and say directly what he would choose, but you can tell there's a reason why he's asking it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this Vidishash Rolls 99. And bye. <laughs>